Hey guys, James here back with another video and as you can see things are a bit different here. We've got this big white backdrop, we've got a slightly different table as well and we've got generally just a different setup all around. Now if you do want to see a behind the scenes video of what this whole setup looks like, how I do it, definitely leave a comment. Um, I will do it if you guys really want it. Um, but today is all about this backpack. It's definitely not a backpack that I've ever seen kind of done before or that I've ever reviewed on this channel before. This is the Day Pack PAC by Psycop. Now if you have been following my channel, I've actually done a video before for this brand um, and it was actually the buy tool um, or the B tool, whatever you want to call it. And it was one of my very, very first videos um, where I reviewed that tool. Um, I did, I was a Kickstarter backer, so they didn't send me the product or anything, um, but I did review it. And so I did reach out to this company and said, hey, I see you've got a backpack going do you want me to do a review? And they said, sure, um, we've seen your videos before, go ahead and, and do it. So they sent me this backpack. This is currently on Kickstarter live. There is still um, at least, I think, a 40 something days to go by the time I upload this video. And you can still get this on Kickstarter. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a walkthrough of this backpack. It is probably gonna be quite long because there's so many different features in this backpack. I don't even know where to start, but luckily, I've got my backpack scoring sheet, trusty here. I've actually redone some of the orders and I've redone the, the ranking just because I found it hard to, you know, uh, rate things out of five. So I've just essentially doubled it and d d I'm gonna do the rating out of 10. And you know, these are the things that I look for, good space management, comfort, overall quality, and the versatility of use. That's what I think makes a great backpack. And yeah, so this, this is the scoring sheet that I'll be using. Now they do have two different designs. Um, I will show you a picture of each one. So this color is called Volcanic Black, and that's what they're calling it. It's essentially a black, a black bag. Um, they do have a color called Space Gray. I see that more as actually a white, but you can see the two pictures here at the moment. All right, now before I even get into looking at this backpack, I will have to say that this version that they sent me is slightly different from the version that you guys will be getting and the retail versions. I'm doing a bit of time travel here. So I've actually used this bag for uh, about a few hours actually. I went out somewhere and I came back and I also looked online and I realized that some of the things which I'm about to explain that you will see um, I actually explained it wrong. So um, just things to note before you watch this video um, because I can't really go back and change what I said. So this top pocket, which is a sunglasses holder, it actually is in the final product. Um, I was mistaken there. This, this front zip is removed in the final, so there isn't gonna be a zip here. And there is a small little secret pocket here, which I'll touch on at the very end. One last thing is that with the internal structure on the rear end, this mesh uh, pocket doesn't just stop here, it actually goes to all the way to the end, getting rid of this bottom, bottom pocket. So this whole entire section is one giant mesh pocket. Hope that explains a few things before you get into the video and apologies that I actually got it wrong for the first time, so I cop, sorry. Um, but yeah, that should solve a lot of things um, when you see this video now. Let's look at a purely exterior design. And just to say, when I talk about design, I'm just looking purely at aesthetics for now. When I look at rear exterior features, then I'll talk about all the different bits. So there is this essentially flippable section, and this allows the backpack to be expanded uh, a lot more. This uh, latch, if lack of a better word, essentially holds this together. Uh, I would have preferred the design to look a little bit nicer in terms of that. It does kind of look, you know, crumbled and stuff just because of the nature of this backpack. It does allow you to expand um, pretty much twice its volume. But purely aesthetics, you know, it does look a bit bulky, looks quite boxy. But um, I think those things uh, are made for a reason and we kind of had to look into the bag to further understand what those are. The white version or the space gray version as they call it is actually quite good as well if you're into you know, having a white backpack. I prefer black, I just love uh, being low key. I don't really like to stand out and plus it means that it doesn't get as dirty easily. They've done well in order to make it still look nice 
um, but still have that functionality to expand. But there's nothing too fancy about the design overall. It's more of a functional backpack, I think. So in terms of exterior design, I mean, trying to weigh up the pros and cons is a bit difficult, but if we're talking purely aesthetics and if I had to give it just on a pure design, I might just have to go with six and a half. I don't think it's that stand out fantastic on design, but I don't think that's what they're really going for. It's more about their features, not really the design. Okay, next we're going to exterior features. Now, there's a ton of exterior features. All right, so you have this zip compartment, which is, you know, uh, reflective material as well. So opening this up allows you to access the entire whole space um, of this section. So if you take this latch off, you can put stuff in here very easily. Um, that's really, really nice. Um, but then when you can fold it up after that, put the zips, let's just put the zips here. And depending on how big the size of what you got inside, you can loop it on each different section to make it nice and tight. So let's just make this really tight so that it doesn't fall away. Now, this top zip was marketed as a sunglasses uh, pouch. So it's got this felt kind of lining, which meant that it wasn't gonna get scratched. You've got a side carry handle. So um, you could, for example, if we just skip ahead to the straps, you could carry it like this as a, as a kind of a brief ca briefcase, suitcase style. Um, and it does have that handle, which is nice to have actually, because um, sometimes you want to grab a backpack that's quite heavy, but you don't want to carry it on here or in the straps. You just want to carry it around. That's nice and handy to have over here. Now at the bottom, you also have this uh, loop holder, similar to what you find on the side. And also depending on how big your items are inside here, and depends how much you want it, uh, you can adjust the straps and hook it um, at the bottom. So let's just hook it at the very, very bottom. And these are all made out of metal. So this is a metal clasp, which is really, really high quality. And I love that. I love that they're using really high quality materials because that means this bit isn't gonna break, um, which is really, really good, peace of mind. The bottom is very, very durable material. I'm not sure what it is, but it is gonna last you a while. It is waterproof, um, knowing this kind of material, and it is very um, resistant to wear and tear. So that's really good, knowing that no matter where you put this, your belongings are gonna be safe. Um, they're not gonna be water damaged, or they're not gonna be damaged by anything, or gonna fall out. This is good material right here. So you have your pocket here, but you also have another pocket on this side. And this is kind of like a secret pocket compartment, um, which goes on the left side. So if we look at here, talking about left side, talking about right side. So this is on the left side, exactly the same size and design, but it's on the left. So if you do, you know, use that class over here, this is a kind of pocket which people can't really see um, where you can put some documents or things that, you know, you want. All right, so that's the front. Now let's look at the back. So you have these straps, we'll get to them later. Okay, you have this big, big pouch at the back, full of um, padding material. Um, it's got this, uh, yeah, really nice soft material, which allows you to, you know, use it. Um, now the interesting thing is that you can open it from two ways. I've never seen a zip designed like this before. So for example, if I meet these in the middle, this is how it opens. So that's actually pretty handy. That means you can access this on the left or access on this on the right. And I'll demonstrate something like that uh, when I actually wear the backpack. That's actually really interesting. I I'm quite surprised on you know, using that design. That's actually quite ingenious. Um, but yeah, you can store whatever in here, you know? And that's fully padded. Now to show just how thick it is, I've got a digi my digital caliper here. This is about 16 mil, 1.6 centimeters thick, this padding. Not sure if it's a bit excessive. I think it might be. I don't know, I'll have to see when I wear it. You also have this Velcro bit. Um, I think that was a bit excessive on the Velcro, honestly. Um, I, I, I just, I don't know, maybe I'm biased. I just hate Velcro sound. But this essentially allows you to attach this to a normal hand carry luggage. Don't know why they opted with the Velcro. Maybe they should have just done a loop strap, something like that, but they've decided to go with the Velcro. Here you've got the nice padding as well for, these are roughly where 
you know, your shoulders would be. And now at the top, you've got this nice carry handle, so you can carry it from the side, you can carry it from the top, or you can hang it from this. Um, this is quite well padded as well. This is about eight millimeters, um, so it's quite durable. It's quite stiff as well, which is great. It's what you want. And then you have these straps, which come down um, and attach to the ends. Now, usually what people like to do is they like to have things within the strap, but I can't see any pockets or any zips uh, within it, so I'm assuming there is none. But I did see it in the promo, so maybe they removed that feature as well. Um, but essentially, you have your clip, which allows you to make sure that the bag wraps around you so that when you swing it around, it won't fall off. Um, and you have these two um, elastic straps, and this essentially can hold sunglasses or some sort of clips, um, same with the top here as well. Um, but that's that. So exterior features, I think they've got a decent amount. Um, I was gonna give this an eight out of 10, but you know, thinking that there is no more pockets on the straps, I know that's you know quite common nowadays. So the fact they didn't have that, they've taken away the top, I'm gonna have to give it a seven and a half. All right, so I just want to quickly uh, mention something which I forgot. Um, they, the reason they do have this Velcro is so that you can attach these straps together and that allows you to carry it uh, like this in the luggage form. So that's the reason why they've used the Velcro. Um, I didn't really understand until I actually saw it on their website. So that's what it's for. Um, I also forgot to include that on the right hand side, there's actually a hidden pocket here. And this hidden pocket allow, is very, very big space and allows you to essentially uh, put anything within this section here. So um, that will mean you could put passports and stuff like that. I even missed it when I was trying to do a thorough you know, look on the bag. So the zip is well hidden. So I, I would probably put whatever you're gonna put here into here. Also the top uh, sunglasses case is in fact still there. Uh, so you can stick your sunglasses here still. I think that's great, they've been still included that. And in case you missed it at the start of the video, um, yeah, as I said, this zip is no longer in the final product. It makes it look a bit more aesthetically pleasing. I think they made a good decision with that. Now, before I weigh this, I will say there's actually something extra in here as well. You have these two things. Uh, these are essentially called whisper pods. So these will add to the weight. So let's take these out for now. Now on their website, they did say this weighed 1.5 kilograms. Let's actually see how much it actually weighs. My measurer is reading 1.62. So just a little bit over 1.5. And that's with nothing inside, nothing inside here. Now, when you're looking at 1.6 or even 1.5 kilograms, that's actually quite heavy for a backpack. If you look at something like the Bobby, that weighs about 800 grams empty. You look at the Click Pack Pro, which I also did recently, that weighs about one kilogram empty. This is 1.5 kilograms empty. So this isn't a light bag. So if you're planning on just only putting a few things in this, then perhaps maybe this isn't the bag for you because the bag itself is actually quite heavy. But there will be other things which we have to consider. For example, the padding weighs quite a bit. And the fact that this also does have three compartment slots, uh, which we'll get into. But in a sense, if you don't really use all the pockets or all the features in it, then it might be in a sense almost uh, a waste of space or a waste of weight. But if you're using um, most of the pockets and most of the features of this backpack, then that weight does become in a sense more economical for you because you're actually using it. So that's something to consider. But in terms of weight, it is very heavy. So I'm just, but considering what it does offer, I have to consider that as well. So I'm going to give it maybe, uh, I'm just gonna give it a seven out of 10. All right, so getting into the straps. Now, I can feel that the straps are actually quite consistent in its thickness, which means there isn't extra padding uh, where most of the weight is going to be resting on you know, your shoulders. So looking at the thickness, it is roughly about eight millimeters thick, and that's quite consistent. Um, it's a bit of a shame that there isn't better padding. Um, I'm not sure how this is gonna feel when I actually wear this with all the weight added onto it. Um, you've got the middle buckle, which allows you to uh, make sure that when you swing left and right, that the bag isn't gonna fly off your left shoulder or your right shoulder. So this is really good for when you're hiking or you're doing a lot of walking. Um, this really helps keep the weight centered on your back. So that's really nice to see. 
Um, and a concern which I would have with this is that, you know, this would fall off on, on each end, but it looks like they have prevented that, which is great, it's fantastic. And yeah, it's fully adjustable depending on what your height is. Now, an interesting fact about this bag is that they recommend um, a height uh, of 165 to about 185 centimeters per person. So that's kind of the rough height. If you're shorter than that, or if you're taller than that, then perhaps this isn't the best bag for you. I think there'll be mainly concerns for those who are shorter than 165 centimeters, just because this bag is actually quite tall and you can find dimensions and all that stuff uh, in their website, which I'll leave in the link description below. But yeah, that would be your main concern, whether you whether this should, would just be way too big for your back. So 165 centimeters is kind of their minimum, what they recommend. So take note of that. And these straps will definitely accommodate um, that length of your height. You have the uh, two elastic straps, which you can use to store sunglasses or some clips and same with here. Now they've opted to use the seatbelt material. So I've seen a lot of companies, they either use the seatbelt material or they use the other kind of fabric-y materials. I personally prefer the fabric just because it slides less, but it also depends on the buckle type. Now these buckle types are all metal, which is fantastic. I love it when companies actually use high quality material because that's actually means that it's gonna last you a long time instead of just like maybe a year or two and then suddenly the, belt, the buckle's gonna break. Now given that I haven't had any uh, backpack uh, kind of buckles or strap connectors break on me but it's it's good knowing that they are metal they're going to be resilient that um, if you are going to be using it a lot and taking this out a lot it's going to take quite a beating and still going to be okay because it is metal so the 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 kind of worries that i usually have with straps is that when i put them on because i've got quite broad shoulders when i put them on the strap kind of gets loose automatically um but i don't really like that seatbelt material that's just me personally you may love it um i guess it is a lot lighter um and in a sense more resistant to uh scratches and damages but it is what it is so the thickness of this seatbelt uh kind of material 25 millimeters so 2.5 centimeters wide so that's essentially the straps um i'm not too fond of them honestly uh they are connected quite well um to this middle section but i think they could have done better they could have had better padding they could have made it really really nice to wear but unfortunately i don't think they have i may change the score later but I I'm, I'm not too happy with it the padding lacks quite a bit um, and then using the seatbelt material, I know that's my personal preference, but I'm going to give them a six. And finally, one further thing which I think they added but forgot to tell me was that there is indeed a, a card slot here. Um, they do advertise it on their uh, Kickstarter page, so I'm going to assume that it is actually there. So it does have that. Another thing I'm not too fond of are these two clips. This is alright, but I feel like this is just a little bit too awkward to get in sometimes um you see here uh, it does lock in quite well but it is a bit just that little bit difficult to try to clip in so they should have gone with a standard clip i reckon rather than going for this type style of design um i think reliability over design is generally what i go for and functionality as well so it is a small thing to me but if you are using this a lot and using it every day and multiple times a day that's gonna be affecting um in in the way that you use it just it's a little bit difficult to connect so all right, this is where the good stuff happens. Interior features. So there's essentially three different sections to this backpack and uh, Psycop actually have designated names for each section. So um, let's just open everything up and we'll let you know what each section is called. So this back section, um, this is where obviously the laptop, the tablet stuff lives and any documents and whatever. This section is called the Pro Layer. So this is essentially where your office stuff, your electronic devices, your laptop, your tablet, all that productivity stuff is gonna go into this Pro Layer. This middle section, they call it the Core Layer. So the Core Layer, essentially you can fit um, documents, uh, so further documents in here, you know, further gadgets, and you have the Whisper sections so essentially this side is for what's called the whisper pods so you can see here these are the two different pods this is the 
not standard size, this is the mini size, so uh, I'll have a look at this just really soon. But essentially, one of the changes that they have made, um, they've told me is that they've, in a sense, cut this in half. This is normal material now, and this is the Whisper kind of Velcro uh, attached material. So they've only they decided to cut this in half, they didn't tell me why, um, but that's what they've done. So take note of that. This is normal material, this is the Whisper material. I'm assuming they're doing that so it's really easy to access that. So for example, if we take the top Whisper, Right, that actually attaches, surprisingly. Oh, still not that well. Um, but essentially, it's supposed to stick. I'm guessing it's not Velcro, but it does allow you to roughly stick it um, when it is applied pressure. So that's the history behind that. And then you have these pockets here. Now this does open to the front section. This is the second half, so this combines the EXO and the core layer. And you can see these two buttons, you actually do have the ability to combine these two uh, different places together. So you have these two buttons, so you just connect them together, you connect this one to here. And essentially you've combined these two uh, areas together. So that you, are, you can do that, or you can keep them completely uh, separately. So let's just start with, uh, let's just start with this layer. So here you've got two zipped areas uh, where you can store things in here and you can again you know as I said fold that area up that's essentially it there's no other pockets that I can see right and then you if you want you can open this area up and yep that allows you to access this so if we take off this clip right this in a sense becomes a massive area where you can essentially extend um, your stuff. Now it does, given that it does look like a turtle shell now, um, but if you are stuck for space, you can store things like this. So that's kind of a, a thing where I, I probably won't be using often as a day-to-day, -day, everyday carry kind of bag, but it is there should I ever need it. So it's more of a safety kind of peace of mind thing. They probably should have added maybe some pockets here. That would have been nice. Made this layer a bit more thicker, but that's that. So this is the core layer as well as the exo layer. So this is a full 180 degree open, allows you to pack quite easily. So if we zip this up. So this is also 180 degree. It's using a Velcro, a little bit of that Velcro, that Whisper kind of material, as well as these button materials as well. Um, but if we just open it up 180 degrees, you can see what we've got. So we've got this Velcro to hold the Laptop, this holds up to, from what their website says, 15 inch laptop. So anything larger than 15 inches, you probably won't be able to fit in here. Um, and I'll show you when I load it up later, uh, my MacBook fitting into this. You've got this tablet, which fits up to 10 inch tablets as well. That's the maximum. And this Velcro strap holds that down. Um, that's essentially it. It would have been also, again, nice to see maybe some, you know, pockets here just for like a power bank or something else. Um, but they've definitely compensated for that by putting it over here. You're going to see, again, they've got this standard kind of, uh, I'm just going to call it the whisper material. It's essentially the fabric, um, which is soft. Um, you have this kind of keychain. It is plastic, surprisingly. I'm surprised it's not metal, given their kind of they're kind of going for that high quality but this is plastic so um, you can store some sort of keychains or something onto this um, but it is plastic so it might break eventually you have all these slots uh, for different cards or money uh, you have pens uh, pen slots here as well another slot here you've got this mesh area which is quite flexible as well and you have the last slot which is here. Now that's a lot of slots and I think that's quite good that they've actually done this. They've actually put individual slots uh, for different things because I think the thing with the, the thing with backpacks nowadays is they just want big volume but they don't do space management well. Back in the day backpacks used to have heaps of these slots and, and I think a lot of people have missed that um, but it's good to see that they're actually making good use of the space compartmentalizing all these things. So I don't really like the full 180 degree open but it is hard to put these back. So this is a uh, f a thick kind of material, it's not that flexible, which is good. I prefer that when it comes to uh, these kind of things. 
and the same let's do it to this side this is the only thing i don't like about 180 degree open bags um i get that most people on kickstarter that's the trend but i dare a company to create a backpack that doesn't use 180 degree open don't follow what the rest of the world is trying to do on kickstarter and be unique and try to do a hundred uh, uh, a, a normal backpack that is still anti-theft. I get that 180 degrees saves on size and stuff like that, but I feel like there are people out there who don't like this 180 degree open. I mean, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you like 180 degree opens? I'm not a big fan, but I have been using the, the Corian Design Click Pack Pro for the past few months, but let me know what you guys think. So you can use it like this, which is great. I think that's good. The thing is you're gonna have to flip, if you want that full 180 degree open, you're gonna have to flip these straps around like so. So just flip it around like this, access that and flip it back. So it does mean that you're gonna have to do the same if you want this to be 180 degree open on that side. So uh, just take note of that. So before we round up with um, the interior features, uh, score we do have to include these which is called the whisper pods um, so these essentially allow you to add whatever gadgets you want and put that into the the core layer section so that's what I was talking about when I said um, you don't have compartments but these are padded roughly padded compartments which allows you to put whatever you want this is targeted towards toiletries bag as you can see it's got that hook that's what it's for so you hook it into your bathroom and stuff like that when you go to hotels and and whatever and this holds all your toiletries and and, and your whatever right so this is that and this second bag is more targeted towards a um, smaller gadget bags so kind of like your external hard drives USBs and stuff like that um, unfortunately they don't have a zip on this side they've only got one on here so that's going to be something to take into consideration when I load it up as well but essentially what you do is let's just say you want to open the core layer side and now that it's half right um, you essentially put that there close it up so that when you want to access a gadget, you don't have to reach in all the way down here, but it's up here um, and you just take it out, unzip it, put it back down. Um, you can also put the one, this big one at the bottom, but now that it's half the size, um, then it's going to be down there. So I'm assuming that's why they took it out because when it, if you're having one that's all the way down there, um, it's going to be hard to you know rip it up. Um, so it's easier, this is just uh, normal material so that this is always going to stay at the bottom. It's just that you want the top to stay at the top. Um, they didn't tell me, but I'm assuming that that is why um, they've done that. So these do cost extra and I'll talk about pricing later, but yeah, these don't default come with the backpack. This is a separate cost or you can bundle it together as well. So interior features, if we count, let's just say we're going with the bundle um, and we do count that, then that's going to boost the score up high. But as the backpack itself, it is going to lower it. So I think I'm going to have to grade it just on the backpack without the whisper pods. And you knowing that these, these whisper pods are available can in a sense boost that rating up yourself. So if, if I just put, talk purely the backpack in terms of the interior features, I'll probably give it an eight. Um, it may change depending on how I load this up and, and what, what kind of fits where. Um, but at the moment, I'm just going to give it an 8 out of 10. And within the Pro layer, they've made changes to it. So instead of having another zip pocket here, they've got an entire, uh, entire uh, pocket that spans throughout the whole length, which is, again, another smart move by them. Sorry again, I didn't make that clear when I was doing my review because Having After Effect done it, then only I realized. Okay, anti-theft and security. This is probably not going for anti-theft at all. Um, they are not really uh, that, you know, into anti-theft. The, the kind of main features that they've got going for themselves is that this is uh, rear access. So this is gonna be a bit against your back. No one's gonna be able to access any of this. No one's gonna be able to access this without you knowing. No one's gonna be able to access anything in this back pocket without you knowing. You also do have a standard uh, luggage lock uh, for these two straps. 
um, but you don't have one for the front too, um, or these as well. This is somewhat anti-theft. They try to sell it on their Kickstarter as anti-theft. I think it is still quite obvious, this strap as well. In terms of a scratch test, let's just quickly do one of these. It does kind of leave a mark. It is somewhat resistant, but I probably wouldn't want to scratch it that hard. Um, they are saying that this is water and dust repellent. However, when it comes to knives and poking, this probably isn't the bag that you want at your side. So um, if theft isn't an issue, for example, I live in Melbourne, Australia, or if you live in Sydney or any part of Australia, um, most places you'll be fine with this. If you live in a country where theft and slashing is very prominent, uh, for example, some Asian countries, um, then you probably wouldn't want to bring this with you um, unless you're very vigilant and very uh, wise with the way that you operate um, in those countries. Um, but yeah, I probably wouldn't bring this as a way that I would say that that gives me peace of mind knowing that my valuables aren't going to be stolen because someone can just open this up and take something. So that is something to consider and take into account before you buy this. So I know they're not targeting this market. Um, they do have that rear kind of thing. So they do have something there, but I'm just going to have to give it a four out of 10. There isn't much there. Uh, to to have that anti-theft and security. So it's not a big thing for me um, personally, but it is part of my scoring sheet um, because I am putting it up against these anti-theft and security bags. So um, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just have to give it a four. Even though I did give it a four, um, it still isn't a big issue for the context of where I live. Um, but as just as part of the scoring, I have to give it a four out of 10. But to me, it doesn't matter that, all, that much because it doesn't affect me that much. All right, so space management, let's get straight into it and let's load this thing up. So what I've actually been using is this uh, Corin Design Clickback Pro, but I'm gonna unpack all this stuff, put it into this bag and see um, what we can do. But first, let me unpack everything and show you what I carry every single day in this bag. So as you can see, these are all the different things that I carry with me. I carry with me a MacBook Pro 15 inch Retina, a Samsung Galaxy Tab S3, uh, iPad 2, it's a really old generation, my Bible, my uh, WD Passport 2 terabyte, Xiaomi power bank, uh, Anchor power bank, um, two different in-ears, these are the Shores, these are the KZ Acoustic in-ears, a folder to carry documents so they don't get bent, my charger, uh, sometimes I carry that, sometimes I don't, of course you've got to have a bottle, miscellaneous USB cables, um, this in-ear kind of converter for XLR to in-ears because I'm a musician, um, USBs, display adapter, chewing gum, pen, card reader for USB and these lights. So that's essentially what I carry and I'm gonna try fit all of this stuff into the new backpack. And I think I won't have much of a problem just cause there's so much space. So let's get straight into it. And let's start with the really easy stuff, which is always the laptop and the tablet. So let's open this back pocket up, the pro section, and straight away we can fit in the laptop very easily. And let's put, uh, okay, I don't think it's gonna fit my tablet with the stylus. Oh, oh, it just fits. Okay, so this does fit the tablet with the stylus. Is it gonna fit this other tablet that I have? It does, okay, this is the first backpack that I've ever seen that fits this tablet this way. Very happy, very happy man. But um, because this is the more expensive newer one, let's stick this one in here first. And then let's just put this one, uh, is it, if it's possible, just here as well. Okay, that's done. Now the charger will just stick at the bottom here. Okay, so pens. Earphones, it's a bit tight, but we'll put them there. Okay, so let's go to this side. I'm actually gonna utilize the whisper pod. I won't use the big one. So this can go here. This Bible can also go here. And this whisper pod can stick at the top. So I'm going to put some stuff into this one. Let me just put 
this at the back first. So chewing gum at the back. Let's put this stuff in here. So I don't use this uh, power bank that often and I don't use this that often either, as well as these earphones. Okay, so we're gonna put, so that does tend to come off as well quite easily, um, especially with that much weight at the back. So maybe it's best if we just keep it zipped halfway we won't get the full extension, but I guess that's the downside. So that's the max it can open, unless you fully extend it. Then you can open it wider, which is better. But I mean, yeah, I wish they wouldn't, they would have just locked it. Like, I don't, I don't feel like you need 180 for this, maybe to access the bottom, but anyway, that's that. So this is pretty much good to go. Actually, let's make a few changes. So, um, I like to always have my power bank ready to go and handy. So, I'm gonna store this on the outside. So here, and maybe if I get the lightning one as well. So, everything else I want in the back because I want it to be nice and secure. So, zip this up. Nice and thick and compact together. This one can go here. Oops, and this here as well. Um, you can store further things in these sections as well. I'm not sure what I would, but any one of those other things could have been put in here. But I think personally for my, what I want, how I use my backpacks and stuff, I'll just leave it like that. And let's just store this. Hmm. There's no more top pockets. So let's just use this side one since this is a bit safer. Okay, so my power bank and stuff goes into here. All right, and that's secured right there. Now, the unfortunate thing is there is no slot for a drink bottle. So, thinking about that, I probably can't fit the drink bottle in there. You technically could fit it in like this, all right? But then uh, if it does leak, uh, that's a big problem. Um, but that is possible, so let's just let's just leave it there for now. However, I do prefer a separate drink holder for that. But this is essentially it. Uh, that's yeah, that's everything. Everything loaded up. Now I know all the comments are going to say I could have loaded this differently. This is just personally how I would load this backpack. Um, you will definitely have different ways of loading it. You have different things from me. Um, even if you do have similar things from me, um, this is just how I like to load my things. Um, it's personal preference. I don't feel like there is one set way to load a backpack. It's up to you and uh, how you want to access things. Sure, I can put this in a way that it's very distributed, but I like to have things in certain places so that when I access that, I can access the other things at the same time. I don't like to keep, you know, having to look through all these different pockets just to try to find things. So I do like the idea that, um, you know, oh, it's not here, but sorry, on this one that, you know, I've got my power bank and stuff ready to go on this pocket. So that's cool. Um, and I forgot to mention that these are watertight pockets. So um, no, no water is going to get inside these zips, which is great. So space management, I think it does quite well, although it is a bit hard to try to reconcile uh, using this section. So the core section, just because these two zips, um, because it's on an angle, I think it makes it a bit difficult to store things because when you open it up, it's just gonna fall out. So perhaps maybe they should have done a straight zip rather than an angled zip. Um, that would have helped, but then I know they're trying to do that bu buckle bit to combine these two sections together. So I guess you, you kind of have to, you know, compromise on one thing and try to make it work. So that, I'm sure that's why they did that, made that decision to do it. But yeah, very bulky, but it, it fit everything didn't really have to stress about where I wanted to fit things. If I couldn't fit things in other places, I could have fit it into the core section, put it into the back. So there's plenty, plenty of space to fit whatever you want. There's even, you know, that this extend, expandable section where I can store another load of stuff. If I have clothes, if I've got shoes, whatever I, I can 
still fit it. There's heaps of space. It doubles the volume. It, it, so the volume by default is 18 liters. That's, that's the minimum. Um, but essentially you have an 18 to 35 liter volume. So that is heaps of heaps of space for you to do what you need to do, store what you need to store. So the overall score, I think I'm gonna score them quite highly. You, it, in cooking, you use the term pressure points where things usually go wrong. Um, they did things right here. Um, they could have, you know, had different, for example, the storage in the pro section, they could have just had that one zip and that would have ruined the whole thing. But they've got all those different slots to store all those different things. They're not going to fall out. They're not going to fly everywhere and they're easily accessible. Now, given that you do have to move these straps away, you know, pull these zips down and then access it. But at least you know where things are and they're going to stay there and they're not going to move around. That's great. That's good storage management. Same with the core section. You know, I may eventually move things back to the core section just because it's easier to access in this zip area, maybe. Um, you know, some of the cables down there, I might move them up to here. But, you know, that, that's quite good. I, I think I'm gonna actually give them a nine just because I think they really did well um, with handling all this space, but making sure it's still functional. So I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. All right, so now we're getting to the close. We're talking about comfort. So the only way to talk about comfort is to put this thing on. So before I do that, let me just weigh how heavy this thing is. So before it was 1.6 kilograms by itself. And now with everything in it, it's reading 8.24 kilograms. You can carry it sideways if you wanted, that is possible. Uh, but let's, let's see what it looks like when you carry it as a backpack. So let's put this thing on. I've got to extend these straps a bit more. Let's extend them quite a bit so that I can reduce them later. All right. So you can bring this closer uh, together, these straps. And this is what it looks like. That's the back section, side, front, and side again. So if I take this middle clip off for a second, it, it does feel very rigid though, in, in a way that is, um, it, it feels safe. So it definitely feels like nothing's gonna fly away. Everything is where it should be. Um, it, it, it feels quite boxy though, in a way. So the comfort, it, it does dig a little bit into my middle back. The lower back surprisingly doesn't feel that bad. Um, I was expecting like a big protrusion into the lower back, but that, that thickness is actually quite okay. And I think because it's quite soft, so it's all right. So I don't really feel much there. Um, mainly it's just the shoulders because this, if I take off this clip, this clip, yeah, the shoulder straps aren't that padded enough. So it, it, it does feel a little bit fatiguing on the shoulders. If they have padded up with really nice padding, this would feel so nice. But the overall weight, if I walk around, yeah, I can feel the weight um, on my shoulders. So I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm a bit torn. Like it, it, it feels secure. So there's no weight moving around, which is really important in a backpack. Cause if you have weight moving around that you have to constantly shift your center of gravity and you have to comp constantly compensate for the movement but everything here is solid it's it's stuck together which is really good but the whole shoulders um is quite there's no padding here and the back is quite stiff as well um it and my back is getting quite sweaty it could be because this room is quite hot but on a hot day you are gonna sweat quite a bit i think um, but for me the biggest part is the shoulder straps they're really digging into my shoulders. So if I let this hang a little bit more, it gets a bit more comfortable. It really depends um, where you hang your backpack, but I think the higher the backpack is, the better it is for you. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I feel. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not feeling the shoulder straps much at all, um, just because there's a lot of weight here that's really digging right in here and there's not much padding. So I know I keep repeating that, but that's a big thing for me. So it could be fine for you. Um, it could be completely fine. It could be just my build, but this is just what I'm experiencing when I'm feeling when I'm wearing this backpack. But you can you know, kind of see what it looks like 
if we pull it up. The seat belt material straps don't move, which is great. I love that. Um, moving this aside, you can access this side pocket quite easily, get what you need. Um, you can also access this pocket as well. Power bank, move it across, and yeah. Um, everything does feel a bit, uh, not really smooth, uh, but quite rigid. Could be part of the material, could be also because I'm wearing a shirt. Um, but the main thing is these straps aren't that fully comfortable. So some general comments, I probably wouldn't wear this all day. If you want to carry a lot of stuff in a, in a bag that can fold up and stuff like that, this is a great bag to do it but it's, I wouldn't carry it all day um, just because it is quite taxing on your shoulders, especially if you're not used to carrying backpacks, heavy backpacks and stuff like that. Now, given mine is eight kilos, if you have a load that's lighter than that, then you might not feel that weight. But remember, my water bottle was, was empty when I loaded it up. So here, this holds up to 700 mil. Um, that's another 700 grams on top. So, you know, it, it is, you know, it is quite heavy and gonna be quite taxing if you carry a lot of stuff, especially when you're talking about 35 liters worth of volume space. Um, all that is gonna take part into, you know, it being a heavy backpack on your shoulders. So I'm still kind of feeling the, the after effects. So overall score, I have to be honest, they did send me this backpack, which I'm really thankful for, but um, I have to be honest with for you guys so that you guys know um, it wasn't that comfortable. You look at how thick this backpack is and how thin these straps are. So you can see against the white, um, that's how thin this strap is. And all that weight is going onto these two straps. They should have made this at least twice as thick or at least one and a half times thicker so that you have better padding, um, better support against your back. Um, because I can still, yeah, I still feel that, you know, weight on my shoulders. So. Honestly, um, I'm just gonna give them a three out of 10 just because this all it's all about the straps. When you talk about weight, the first thing is the straps. These straps have to be super comfortable and they made a product which can hold a lot of things, but if it's not comfortable to wear uh, with especially all that weight putting onto you, then it's, it's gonna be painful um, it, for a long-term kind of hiking or if you're out in the whole day wearing this backpack, it's gonna, it's gonna weigh down on you. Um, so in case you didn't uh, believe me when I said that it was uncomfortable, uh, I did actually try wearing this out when I went out somewhere, given I did drive there, but I did use this backpack to walk in and outside of the building um, that I was in, it was my church. And for the very short period that I had it on, walking from my car to the building and within the building, it was actually quite straining on my shoulders. So it did actually uh, hurt me. Now, given I was carrying about eight to nine kilograms worth of stuff. However, um, they do advertise that you can carry a lot of things in here. So. Uh, take it as you will. Um, I hope they do change the straps somehow, um, maybe in a further version or whatnot. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's that. All right, so let's put this aside for now and just quickly talk about pricing. So if you wanna get the day pack just by itself, so not including the uh, Whisper Pods, just the backpack itself, you can get it for $179 US uh, from Kickstarter right now. Uh, there may be some spots where you can get this for super early burn on Kickstarter. However, those spots are running out quite quickly as they've already reached their target of $30,000. So $179 US if you want the backpack itself, $250 is the full retail price. So if you do want to save that extra $70 US, then definitely go get this if this is something that you want to get. Now you also have a combo pack. So the, the, the day pack itself with the two whisper pods, so the standard and the mini. So the combo together is 199 US dollars and the retail price, so full retail price would be $339 for the back the backpack and the two whisper pods. So if you do wanna get that combo, that bundle, then it's better to always get it a lot earlier because you are saving a lot more money. And delivery date as well, I may as well talk about this. This is, will be fully delivered by April 2018 next year. So that's roughly when you can expect uh, this day pack. In terms of pricing, is it worth it? $179. Now, if I was to convert that into my currency, which is Australian dollars, that would be about $220, $230. Um, for a backpack like this, the functionality and everything is, is fantastic. I think it's great. A lot of things that you can put inside. 
However, the comfort really does let me down um, with the fact that these straps are so thin. Now, given that you can probably makeshift some, some straps yourself, so you could probably add some extra padding. Uh, I know a lot of you guys out there are really good with DIY stuff, so you can actually add extra padding on each strap and make it a lot more comfortable. And, and if, you, if you can do that, that'll be fantastic. You know, that'll be great. And that's de definitely worth buying. But for me personally, because I have a lot of stuff to carry and it's a lot of heavy stuff, my MacBook, my two tablets, all the electronic devices, that hard drive as well, my water bottle, all these stuff adds up to a really heavy backpack, eight something, eight to nine kilograms. And so, you know, that comfort aspect does affect my decision on the pricing. Now, let's just say if we did take away that comfort that it was really comfortable, then I would say 179 is actually quite reasonable. It's still very expensive uh, for those who you know have, have only ever spent money on maybe a $50 backpack. However, this is more than just an ordinary backpack. You have this extra volume space that you can use to uh, store extra stuff, um, for lack of a better way of explaining. Um, you have these three compartments, which is really great, um, but it's just that comfort aspect. It is good for what it is. They have used good quality material. So for example, those buckles are metal. Um, the, it's just the straps are the biggest letdown for me. So I'll give it a six and a half out of 10 for pricing. And deal breakers, I think the biggest one for me, you've already heard, is the straps. These straps are just way too thin uh, for this backpack. This backpack is huge. They've done so much to this backpack and it's kind of like their weakest link is the strap. You know, let me just quickly compare. So for example, these are the Corin Design straps. The material is vastly different. This has this mesh and it's so soft, right? But this is quite flat. It literally just feels like just a flat foam, whereas this actually has some air, has some cushion to it, right? And makes it really nice to wear. That's the big deal breaker for me. So for me, comfort is a very big thing. It's part of my top four. For me, getting this backpack and, and buying one for myself would be that comfort. If it was comfortable, if it felt really nice, if those straps were thicker and more air cushiony, I'll be a lot more comfortable saying, um, get one of these, this feels great. You can store a lot of stuff and you can't even feel it on your back. However, that's not the case with this. It is quite uncomfortable um, wearing this for long periods of time. Now, if you are carrying less than eight kilograms, maybe six or five kilograms, then it should be fine. There, there will be no issues. But if you really wanna utilize all this space, you know, all this extra compartments, this expanding it to 35 liters, then you're gonna to have to be able to carry that 35 liters and you can't really do that with these straps comfortably. They're a bit too rigid, a bit too flat and not really cushiony for lack of a better word. So that, that's the deal breaker for me. So versatility and use, um, where can you use this? Uh, how versatile is it? Um, you definitely can use it for your work. Um, it is a little bit bulky, I would say. I mean, if you're just bringing a laptop, maybe a few documents, maybe a charger or something, and maybe like your lunchbox meal or everything, then that's fine. That's great. You can go ahead and bring it. Um, if you are gonna bring it as much as I am, then it is quite bulky. Um, what else? You can probably bring it for outdoors. Um, it is water uh, resistant, so none of that grain is gonna really affect this much. The zips are watertight and sealed as well, so that's really good. And it is dust resistant as well. So you go into the mud or anything, you, your stuff isn't really gonna be damaged. And that bottom uh, is very, very good material as well. So it's quite resistant to that. Uh, I wouldn't bring it if you wanna go cycling or on a jog or whatever. Um, I would probably use the travel lab uh, backpack. Um, that's probably more suitable to that. So they say it's for urban dwellers, photographers, travelers and commuters. Um, it, yeah, I can definitely say that but I feel like it's quite, uh, it's still in a sense quite limited to its use. I probably wouldn't bring it overseas just because it's not that anti-theft, unless I wasn't gonna put anything into these pockets because people can take these and, you know, steal your stuff. Um, so I wouldn't bring it overseas. So versatility, I'll give it a six. Final score, tallying all the different scores up, uh, I have to say that the final score is 63 and a half out of 100. This backpack just didn't do that well. The biggest letdown was the comfort and anti-theft security. So 
that w the confident was the lowest score, three out of 10, and the anti-theft security was four out of 10. So um, I did say that the anti-theft security wasn't a big issue for me personally, but it did also affect its versatility and its use because if you do have that anti-theft, um, because theft is getting more prominent nowadays, um, then that limits where you can take it in terms of travel. So there is that to think of. So 63 and a half out of, t uh, out of 100, didn't do that well, um, as you can probably see from the result. Um, however, they do have a great concept. I mean, this is the first backpack I've ever seen that to, to utilize this kind of um, non-anti-theft design. And I think it's in a sense good that they're doing it because I think nowadays the niche is everyone's going to anti-theft, everyone's going to these like shell style backpacks. But these guys have said, nah, let's go to a different approach. Let's talk about volume and space. And they would have really, really made a great backpack had they made those straps really nice. All they had to do was make these straps really nice and they would have had my complete recommendation to go ahead and get this. However, it just isn't there. The Comfit is the biggest deal breaker and the biggest letdown for this backpack. However, they still have a chance to maybe change it because they haven't necessarily fulfilled this uh, to everybody um, out there. Um, it, is it is planned to be delivered in April 2018. So if they can do something about those straps, that would be amazing. That would be the biggest thing that they could do at the moment. So Psychop, fix these straps and you'll have a great backpack um, to sell to people. They have a great concept, great uh, volume expansion. That's good. That's a great idea. However, these straps just really let it down. Um, so that's reflected in the overall scores because this does affect a lot of things as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, it's been a little bit longer just because there is so much to cover in this backpack. A lot of features. It really shined through when it came to space management. So nine out of 10 for uh, space management. They should they have done an exceptional job with that. So they should be really proud about what they have done. Um, but yeah, it's just that strap. That's all I have to say. It's just the strap. So having traveled back in time, I'm now here to say that with some of these changes they've actually made, does actually increase their points that they receive. However, it's not gonna increase that much. I think overall, it would only have given them at least maximum seven points. So that would have brought them up to 70, uh, so 68 to 70, which does give it a, a, a much more appealing mark than 63. Um, so in a sense, they have made the right decisions when they, when they uh, change this specific version. So this is the version two, they're now opting for version three. So please make note of those changes. Those are really important when you are uh, deciding on whether you should buy this bag or not. This is not the exact bag. I feel like this is actually quite a big different bag than the one that they have now, um, despite them saying it's 98% the same. Um, I think it's more about 80% um, the same and there's that 20% difference which does help them get from a 63 all the way to a 70 or 68. So do take that into consideration um, before you consider buying this or, or not buying this. So that's it for this video. This has been the Day Pack by Psychop. Um, go check them out in the link in the description below. I will leave their Kickstarter link as well as their website um, where you can go support them, buy this backpack if this is something that you're interested in. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think this is a great backpack? Was I completely wrong about how to use it? Be honest, let me know. Um, I'm happy to respond to the comments. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions or anything um, that you wanna ask about this backpack, by all means, ask them below and I'll try to get around to answering those for you as soon as I can. But hope you like this video. Like it if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it. Subscribe to see more videos like this in the future and I will see you guys in the next one.